Hi everyone, my name is Chloe Nguyen Joy and I'm a community media journalist with Regent Park TV. On the 17th of March 2020, Ombudsman Toronto, led by Ombudsperson Susan E. Opler, released a report titled Toronto Community Housing Corporation Complaint Trend Data and Related Recommendations. The report covered five key topics. Ombudsman Toronto's role in receiving complaints, the issues Ombudsman Toronto investigates, data about TCHC complaints, two major trends in complaints, and next steps for TCHC. Today, we'll be exploring the first three points, how Ombudsman Toronto receives complaints, the types of issues they cover, and the statistics around the complaints. The Toronto Community Housing Corporation, or TCHC, is a social housing agency that owns and manages subsidized housing properties in Toronto. They are responsible for operating, developing, facilitating, and maintaining around 60,000 rental units in 2,100 buildings across the city. Their mission statement says they provide clean, safe, secure homes in a state of good repair to low and moderate income households, including seniors, families, singles, refugees, recent immigrants to Canada, and people with special needs. As to be expected, their idealized mission statement isn't always carried out in reality. Often, TCHC buildings are unsafe and in desperate need of renovation and proper maintenance. Even Prime Minister Justin Trudeau acknowledges this issue. In April 2019, he pledged $1.3 billion of renovation money to TCHC, saying, we're going to see much needed renovation. After all, having a roof over your head doesn't cut it if the windows won't close or the plumbing is dodgy. The increased budget, while beneficial, is certainly not an end-all, be-all solution for TCHC's problems. When residents have a complaint, they can report it to TCHC management and address the issue internally. Unfortunately, the process is caught up in bureaucratic red tape and is not well publicized. Many people don't know that the internal complaints process even exists. This prompts residents to take the complaints directly to the ombudsman. Last year, over half of Ombudsman Toronto's complaints were filed without having gone through the internal system. Writes Opler, this was because tenants did not know how to raise and escalate their complaints at TCHC. Since 2018, Ombudsman Toronto has been urging TCHC to promote their complaints process. Complaint topics include safety, transfers, tenancy slash rent, and the landlord slash eviction board. Properties are often infested with pests like bedbugs, cockroaches, and mice, leading to an 18% jump in pest control requests last year. And despite promising safe and secure homes, the living situation can be dire. Priority transfers, including instances where tenants found loaded guns and witnessed assaults, are denied or delayed. Of these cases, more than half who have been waiting for transfers have had to wait over five years. But the most common issue is maintenance, making up over a third of all cases reported. As Trudeau mentioned, living in a well-maintained building is key to feeling comfortable in your own home. Sufficient lighting, heating, and water are all basic human needs, but TCHC fails to address these problems and enforce administrative fairness. Administrative fairness refers to the set of expectations outlined by Ombudsman Toronto when addressing complaints. It includes fair process, access to relevant policies and procedures and reasonably quick service, fair outcome, apply rules consistently and make decisions without bias, and fair treatment, being treated with respect and having clear and accessible communication. Poor communication makes up over half of administrative fairness complaints. These can include not responding to calls, letters, and emails, not giving tenants notice about renovation or construction work in the building, not explaining reasons for transfers and evictions. It's clear that work needs to be done to improve the TCHC complaint process. We took a look at Ombudsman Toronto's March 2020 report on the complaints filing process for Toronto community housing residents. In the second segment, we'll talk about what needs to be done to improve the efficiency of this process. We emailed Ombudsman Toronto for more information about the report and its implications. 
We also contacted TCHC CEO Kevin Moshman, but received no response. Over the past five years, there has been a steady rise in TCHC complaints handled by Ombudsman Toronto. Can this trend be attributed to any specific socioeconomic event or policy, either specifically in Toronto community housing or on a larger scale? Ombudsperson Susan E. Oplo replied, Every year since the Toronto Ombudsman's office opened in 2009, the highest number of complaints to the office has been about TCHC. This is interesting and important to note, since the office oversees all 45 city divisions as well as almost all city agencies, boards, and corporations. Over the years, complaint numbers have risen overall. This makes sense as more people learn about my office and our work. But as you point out, complaints to Ombudsman Toronto about TCHC have risen quite dramatically in the past five years. We could speculate about the reasons, but I believe my findings in the report highlight two key ones. One, TCHC had no clear or clearly communicated complaints process for tenants until my office pressed management to establish one starting in late 2018. TCHC finally created a clear complaints process in October 2019. As awareness of Ombudsman Toronto grew over the past five years, more and more TCHC tenants with complaints they didn't know how to pursue with TCHC brought them to us. Two, similarly, we have repeatedly found that TCHC staff's communication with tenants has not been of a standard that the public should reasonably expect. Frustrated, more and more tenants each year have turned to Ombudsman Toronto for help resolving problems that TCHC should be working with them to resolve. That's why, in my report, I recommend that the TCHC board satisfy itself that management has 1. developed and executed a detailed plan to effectively publicize its new internal complaints process to all tenants, staff, and the public, and 2. developed and executed a plan to train all staff on how to provide good public service, which includes communicating in a transparent, fair, and timely way with tenants and the public. Two major conclusions were drawn from the report. First, complaints to Ombudsman Toronto were mostly premature. That is, tenants hadn't exhausted the TCHC internal complaint system before going to the Ombudsman. Second, TCHC often refuses to communicate or poorly communicates with tenants about their issues. It's evident that TCHC's lack of clear and timely communication left residents frustrated leaving them to turn towards Ombudsman Toronto. As Councillor Anna Bio says, if you were to put in a complaint and you're feeling like you're not being addressed, you're not being listened to, you're going to go to somebody else. By improving the efficacy of TCHC's complaint processing system, Ombudsman Toronto will be freed to investigate more cases. To combat these problems, the Ombudsman made, made two recommendations. The TCHC Management Board should take steps to publicize its internal complaints process to tenants, staff, and members of the public. In addition, all employees should receive training on how to properly communicate with residents in a transparent, fair, and timely way. The board was given to the end of 2020 to implement these new changes. Kevin Marshman, the CEO of TCHC, responded to the report on March 16, 2020. These changes included revised complaints process, a link to the complaints process on their website, posters about the process in all buildings, and fully staffing the complaints office. They are also planning to institute a number of other developments, including brochures, a mail newsletter, and an FAQ document about the process. In addition to these changes, Rauschman outlined a new training program for staff. It focuses on good public service and improved communication skills, hopefully leading to a decline in administrative fairness issues. Poor communication or lack of communication is a critical problem, and the report recommends training all TCHC employees on how to communicate with tenants efficiently and effectively. What are some key processes or concrete actions that should be included in mandatory TCHC job training? 
You've asked me to elaborate on my recommendation in the report that TCHC management provide training to all its employees about providing good public service, which includes communicating with tenants and members of the public in a transparent, fair and timely way. Um, no matter what the issue at hand is, um, clear, accessible and easy to understand communication is a fundamental principle of administrative fairness. People have the legal right to be listened to by their local government and also to receive information on services and decisions that affect them in a way that meets their needs. Um, unfortunately, we find too often in, our, in the complaints that come to us regarding Toronto Community Housing that this uh, type of communication has not occurred. And as you can understand, um, all kinds of problems result from that not, not happening. Um, in terms of exactly what the training will entail, that's really something for TCHC to decide. They know their business and they need to uh, make the training relevant to, to the context in which their employees find themselves. Um, but what I would say is that in general, there are some principles of good communication uh, that I have sort of figured out over my time working as the Ombudsman. I've been in this role for almost four years now and um, I've dealt with and seen a lot of complaints, a lot of issues and communication, uh, poor quality communication is something that comes up more often than anything else. Um, in my 2019 annual report, which was recently released, it looks like this and you can access it on our website at www.ombudsmantoronto.ca. Uh, in my message from the Ombudsman, I set out six um, sort of tips that I wish I could give every member of the Toronto Public Service uh, to help them communicate better with the people that they serve uh, and thereby enhance the public's trust in their local government and the public satisfaction um, with, with Toronto's government. And of course that includes uh, TCHC. So the six tips that I uh, have set out, I call them six for the six, um, are think about how you make people feel, listen and try to understand, trust members of the public and be open with the information that they need, be nice and try to help, empathize, imagine what it's like to be the person that you're serving and finally, fight institutional indifference. Treat each person like a person, not a number. I think that if um, TCHC staff and all public servants in Toronto were able to incorporate those six principles into their everyday uh, communication with tenants, members of the public generally, um, as I say, there would be a great improvement in the public's regard for and trust of um, the people that work in these important roles. Okay, thanks. The report and response has particularly strong implications for lower income communities. Regent Park is one of the oldest and largest public housing developments in Canada. Many of its residents are underemployed new immigrants struggling to find adequate and meaningful work. Though it's recently transitioned to a mixed use, mixed income neighborhood, a large percentage of people still live in subsidized housing managed by TCHC. Increased publicity and improving communication should help tenants report and resolve issues more efficiently. Providing sufficient housing is the first step towards building a stronger Regent Park community. The problems have been identified and addressed, but is it enough? TCHC CEO Kevin Marshman addressed this report with a plan to implement these recommendations. Do you feel these new policies are sufficient, or is there still more that needs to be done? Have you seen any change in the number of complaints being reported? In response to Marshman's plan, Ombudsperson Oplo said, It's too early to know how effectively TCHC will follow through on our recommendations, and whether their efforts will result in fewer complaints to Ombudsman Toronto and better service to tenants. Time will tell, and we will be watching. For Regent Park TV, I'm Chloe Windroy. Thank you for watching. Please do not forget to like, comment, and share to our channel. Follow us on all our social media platforms. And for more information, please check out our website.